G'day YouTube, one MJ here. Welcome back to my channel. Well, Monday night here in Australia, uh, Monday morning over in the States, and Bitcoin uh, and the market in general is up. So now we're at $352 billion. So slowly moving our way up, but again, we're still down from sort of the 400 billion that we're at only a couple of weeks ago. Now I've noticed something really uh, that I think is significant anyway on the Bitcoin charts. So as we can see, we had this trend line here, slowly but surely moving up, and that's still holding. And we had this downward trend line, and this is now, you know, sort of being invalidated, I guess. And we can see we're breaking out to the upside. But we can see over the last few days, really anything that gets down to around about ten and a half thousand dollars, uh, it's being bought up. But they're not, you know, and I'm going to say there because I'll get to my point very shortly, is that they're not. Are buying until it kind of you know comes back down a little bit so we're in this very tight range and again we've broken out of this pattern here so I'll go back over to here and this is a tweet that I put out not long ago so with Bitcoin being aggressively bought up in the low 10k range who else thinks other institutional buyers are repeating what MicroStrategy did and slowly purchasing it purchasing it so as not to massively pump up the price now, MicroStrategy, they were on record before saying that they spent weeks uh, buying up Bitcoin. And again, they were just slowly purchasing little bit by little bit by little bit when it kept kind of dipping down. And I reckon other institutional buyers are currently doing that as well. Because if they go out and just buy it all in one big whack, it'll throw the price sky high and they'll pay probably twice as much as what they could if they do it like MicroStrategy did. So it was bit by bit by bit. Now... Let's have a look here. Grayscale Investments scooped up over 17,000 Bitcoin in the last seven days. And I can bet you they are doing exactly what MicroStrategy did. So there we go. We know of one other institution that is still actively buying Bitcoin at the moment at $10,000. And again, it's it was the low 10,000s that it was being snapped up. Now it's at that $10,500 level. Whenever it gets down there, it's getting aggressively bought up. I believe it's not just going to be Grayscale that's doing this. There is going to be other institutional buyers out there. I am super bullish at the moment on Bitcoin. I believe this is going to break 11000 very soon. Now, that's not to say it'll do today or tomorrow. Uh, it could possibly even, you know, pull back a little bit, get back down to around that, you know, kind of $10,000 level, maybe even the $10,500, sorry, between the $10,000 and the $10,500 level. We'll have to wait and see. But I reckon uh, it's just going to coil and coil until it's going to push right up and we're going to come up and uh, break this $12,000 level. And I think it's going to be soon, regardless of whether there's any stimulus packages or not. Now, if stimulus packages uh, get uh, you know pushed out and a lot of people are suspecting that there will be one soon, I think this price is going to push really high. But we can just see that it's got this pattern. Sometimes it pushes up high. And then it'll have a retrace, but it's just going up. Yes, we had a correction here. We're always going to get corrections. And really, this correction just took out this bit of a pump here. So this is that really big pump. And that took that back. And then got us back in line with sort of over here where we were. And we're continuing to go up. So my theory is that institutional buyers are currently in the market and they are slowly but surely and they've got their targets you know like at the moment i'm going to say it's around about ten thousand five hundred when it wicks down to ten thousand five hundred they're snapping it up and before they were doing it around about that kind of ten thousand dollar mark anytime it got into the low ten thousands uh, they were snapping it up and now they're doing it at 10,500 and soon they're going to be doing it at 10,800 and soon they're going to be doing it at 11,100 and this is just going to continue on. That is my theory. I'd love to know what you think. Do you think institutional buyers have caught wind of how MicroStrategy did it and are currently doing the same and just slowly but surely buying it? Now they're you know they couldn't get it all at ten thousand dollars because again if they put a big order in at ten thousand some of it would be filled at ten thousand and then the next bit would be filled at you know like nearly eleven thousand and twelve thousand if they were just buying really big chunks of it so that is my theory that is what's happening at the moment uh it's not just grayscale they already own like i think it's one percent of all the bitcoin out there and they are still actively buying 
They are currently in the market. The article is right there and they bought another 17,000 Bitcoin in the last seven days. I can tell you right now, well I can't tell you, I don't know for a fact, but I am 100% sure it's not just Grayscale doing it. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, MicroStrategy is still buying more. They bought their initial lot, they bought their second lot, I reckon they're still buying their third lot and I reckon other institutions are going to get on board soon and this price is going to start to move very rapidly over the last part of this year. I think, you know, not financial advice, just my personal opinion, but I think by the end of the year, hopefully this will load up, I think we're going to retest this. I think by December, we're going to be retesting our all-time high. We really are pretty close right now. We're not very off, we're not very far off, and once we can get past that kind of $14,000 range, I think that'll happen after the election, uh, the US election. I think we'll go from 14,000 up to 20,000 fairly quickly. I don't think it's going to take too long ago long at all. And again, there's going to be more and more institutional buyers that are getting in. They get all the inside scoops and they're going to be seeing, all right, uh, Grayscale's buying more again. They must know something. MicroStrategy bought a whole lot. They must know something and they're into, you know, computer analytics and all the rest of it. Yeah, my mind is basically made up. I believe institutional buyers are now sort of piling into Bitcoin and this is going to continue on for the next few months. They are just going to keep buying it every time it dips down just a little bit and when it dips down just a little bit and when it dips down just a little bit and we are going to continue to see Bitcoin move in this sort of fashion. Will there be pumps and sort of dumps? Not big dumps, but you know, pumps like this and dumps like this? Absolutely, because the institutional buyers are going to be trying to buy back uh, more Bitcoin uh, and then we get the whales who will see the price going up and they'll spike it up and then sell off to try and buy back more. But it is slowly but surely moving away from, you know, just, you know, the, the couple of big hands and there's going to be numerous big hands, which is much better for the market. It'll mean it's much harder uh, for the market to be manipulated by only a few uh, when it gets out to the masses. So that's my thought. I'd love to know what you think. Again, let me down, know down in the comments below if you believe that uh, other institutional buyers are doing exactly what MicroStrategy did and what Grayscale have openly come out and said what they did. Now, another really interesting story was uh, from the Daily Hoddle. So it's talking, talking about uh, Raoul Pohl. He has openly said he is, uh, you know, he's long in Bitcoin. Uh, and he now has half of his worth in Bitcoin. And he's worth a bit. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly much, but I'm going to say he's probably worth a couple of million at the very least. And he's put half of his money into Bitcoin. That's how uh, much of a believer he is. And he's an ex-Goldman and Sachs manager, so we'll have a, look, a little bit of a read. In an interview with the Breakdown podcast host Nathaniel Whitmore, Powell says he believes Bitcoin is now, on, now the top reserve asset on earth despite its high levels of volatility. I'm now just firmly of the opinion that Bitcoin is the world's greatest reserve asset. Yes, we have too much vo vo volatility for that right now, but I can't fault it. It doesn't work for a whole bunch of stuff, or it could do, but it's probably not good enough and maybe that's not its role. But as the foundation stone for everything, it's got a bloody good chance. I don't see anything that's going to come on the horizon or that exists already that has a chance. So that's Raoul Paul Powell right there talking about where he thinks Bitcoin at is at, and I would agree. It's too slow and things are for it to be a world currency. Uh, yeah, it's just way too slow for that. But as a store of value, it is perfect. And we'll continue. As far as store of value assets go, Powell says a conversation with MicroStrategy, we were just speaking about that before, Chief Executive Michael Saylor opened up his eyes as to why Bitcoin is superior to gold. If you look at the supply of gold, it's 2% a year. So they're de devaluing gold by 2% a year because the demand is not offsetting the supply. And if you compound that, it's basically the rate of inflation. So if you compound that, you're actually losing purchasing power. I looked at everything versus the top four central bank balance sheets in terms of rates of change of growth. Gold did well. It underperformed by 50%. Uh, it underperformed by 50% the balance sheet. The only asset in the world that actually outperformed the G4 balance sheet is Bitcoin. 
it's the only one. Pace out Pal says he believes Bitcoin is in the early stages of a fresh bull run and ultimately he thinks the price of one Bitcoin could reach $1 million. He says Bitcoin's volatility will eventually fade as its market cap grows and institutions find legally compliant ways to enter the space. Bitcoin was unique. It started as a groundswell, it came from individuals. Nothing else has come this way. And we now need to get in the institutions. The institutions will watch price, but unless it's an agreeable asset for them, i.e. they can store it, they can value it, they can put it in their accounts, they're not going to do anything. But it's the actual market cap of the asset itself that will end up driving them, not the performance. Because don't forget, we've seen it with the hedge fund industry and everything else. The more these guys pile in over time, volatility dampens because there's much more larger buyers and sellers and eventually the price structure of the whole industry changes, which is fine. Bitcoin will morph from being a rocket ship to a cruise liner and it needs to happen, but not yet. We'd like to do that at a higher price, please. <laughs> and I totally agree. Bitcoin will, it's still going to go up because there's only 21 million full stop. There's never going to be more than 21 million Bitcoin. So it will continue to grow throughout the rest of its life because it is such a finite supply. We don't have anything that has a fixed market cap out there. Bitcoin does, so it will definitely level out where it doesn't have the huge spikes and drops anymore, but it will continue to go up. So for me, I'm holding on to my Bitcoin. I'm not selling. Not for a long, long time when it really does start to kind of level out. And even then, I'm not selling all my Bitcoin. Not that I have that many for a start, but I won't be selling all of them. When asked what it would take uh, to get him to lower his irresponsibly long position in Bitcoin, Powell pointed to the rise of emerging markets as the only thing that could change his mind. If the dollar falls, it could be emerging markets. That's the only thing that I could see that could compete for my capital for Bitcoin over a three-year time horizon. And see, I would agree with that as well. You know, at some stage, Bitcoin is going to level out and those big gainers aren't going to be there. It'll still gain because it's a finite supply, 21 million, it's capped, but it won't have the massive swings. And then people will be looking for the next thing. And my personal opinion is it'll be the altcoins once Bitcoin levels out. Any new kind of cryptocurrency that's coming out, uh, they'll still have massive swings for many, many years to come. Whereas Bitcoin might only have another sort of, you know, maybe another decade of, you know, some semi-wild price swings and then it'll have really leveled out because there'll be so much institutional uh, money brought in. And yeah, altcoins will sort of last a little bit longer, but even then after Bitcoin, we'll have to look for the next thing. What's the next thing, the next emerging market or disruptive technology that is going to have the massive gains and you know no one knows that off the top of their head at the moment but that's something i will be keeping a lookout for in the future don't get me wrong i still love crypto and i'm not going anywhere but at some stage once it levels out and the massive gains are gone i'm going to have to look elsewhere if i want to continue to make massive gains and that's something for you to think about now last but not least the DeFi hype so the founder of NEO says the DeFi hype has just begun, and I believe this as well. I think there's going to be huge gains to be made in DeFi, and not just in this bull run, in the next bull run as well. I, I, this, yeah, I believe DeFi is going to be massive. I don't know how else to say it. It is going to revolutionize, uh, you know, the, the way we sort of think of money uh, and the way we bank. I think, you know, traditional banks are in big trouble when this stuff starts to go mainstream. Yeah, the banks are really going to have to innovate to come up with ways to, you know, I don't want to say combat because they shouldn't be combating it, but to get on board. And look, banks already are. They're already moving into the digital space and they're going to start to offer, you know, lending platforms and things like that. I can guarantee you that they're not going to want to miss out on this, uh, but I don't think they're going to be able to beat it. It's just going to be too hard. I personally believe the banking system that we have now where you can go into branches that are basically everywhere and there's all this stuff, they will be defunct in the future. There will be small offices where it's just loans and that, but you won't be going into sort of C banks and bank tellers and getting cash anymore. That'll be done and dusted. Most of it will be online. Banks will nearly be uh, a digital platform. Uh, they will have very few people that you'll be able to see face to face. And even loans in that, I think they will be uh, done much the same. Banks will basically be a program more than uh, 
you know, a human resource. There's obviously going to be humans working uh, behind the scenes, but I don't think the banks that we see today will be around another 25, 50 years. I, th I think they'll be long gone. But let's continue on. The hype around DeFi is not fading away and is only just beginning, said NEO founder Da Hong Fei. I think that's how you say it. I hope I didn't butcher it. During a live stream on China's hub on September 25th, so it's only a few days ago. Da said DeFi created a process in just a few years that traditional finance took hundreds of years to perfect. DeFi projects are now experimenting with all sorts of financial products and services. He added that lending and borrowing, decentralized exchanges, insurance, and all kinds of derivatives are on the rise in DeFi. The initial stage DeFi infrastructure has a solid good start, and now it is time to see more and more applications to be built and innovated on DeFi. According to Da, DeFi has brought numerous new possibilities in the financial arena, including creating a new type of asset that will allow users to access cash at any time. Oh, I don't even think we'll be using cash uh, in the not too distant future. DeFi will have a significant impact on future e economic life. He predicts people will not need banks in the future. I was literally just speaking about that uh, in the future as they turn uh, towards DeFi services. And this scenario may already be happening using China as an example. Chinese people have done this more or less, prob uh, probably dealing with banks, dealing with Alipay and WeChat at least doing this kind of financial behavior without going to the bank. Da and Binance co-founder He Yi uh, revealed in the live stream that Neo and Binance are actively looking into DeFi applications. One such application is Flamingo, an interoperable full stack DeFi protocol built on the Neo blockchain. It allows users to participate as traders, stakers, and liquidity providers. Binance has announced it listed uh, Flamingo on its launch pool on the 23rd of September. Both are already looking to build DeFi infrastructure further. As Cointelegraph previously stated, China's state-endorsed public blockchain is looking into building a regulatory compliance platform that can bridge global DeFi applications and government regulations. This is why I am super bullish on DeFi. I think there are going to be a number of winners uh, from DeFi. I don't think there's really going to be one that kind of takes it out. Like, you know, Wi-Fi, don't get me wrong. Uh, it could be a good project. I haven't had anything to do with it so far. But it's not going to be the one and all that takes over everything. I think Aave's got a future. I think Ren's got a future. I think Synthetics Network has got a future. You know, it looks like Wi-Fi will have a future. It sounds pretty good from what I've seen, but I need to do more research into it. Uh, and again, a number of other projects they're going to be around. And I think Neo is going to do really well as China itself is using Neo. Neo had a really good pullback from its all-time high. I think it was like I don't know, a couple of hundred dollars for a for a neo at, a, at one point and i think at the moment it's about 25 dollars. so i think neo's uh, not a bad buy and i've got a position in neo i may look at increasing uh that number and and DeFi is going to be huge you know cardano will get onto DeFi, and polka dot already has obviously you know DeFi is massive on ethereum and that's the home base for it at the moment this space is going to be huge if you are in now it is my personal opinion not financial advice you are going to see some crazy gains in the future but if you're thinking just this sort of you know this bull run uh, you're probably thinking short-sighted you know build your positions and yes when you think it's getting to the peak maybe sell off a third again not financial advice just you know my personal advice sell off a third or 50 percent whatever at least get your initial money back so then you're just playing with you know sort of house money but really if you're getting in it at the moment and you know we see the next all-time highs i think if you sold a third of uh whatever you got into you're probably going to triple your money with the third that you sell Again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. And that's if you got into good pro projects. Some projects are going to fail. That's just the way it works. But in a true bull market, generally everything does well. You can put your money into just about anything and it'll probably, you know, it'll make you some money. But again, not guaranteed. And please don't take that as financial advice. It is just my personal opinion from my time in the space. I've seen a bull market. I've seen a bear market. Now I'm seeing another bull market again. Uh, you know, I've built my thesis around what I've seen over the last sort of three and a bit years. Uh, and look, my thesis will continue to evolve with this market. If the market changes, my thesis will uh, change. 
But at the moment, I'm, you know, I've built my positions. Some of my positions are 50% down at the moment. Uh, well, not quite 50, nothing's 50%, but I've got uh, Unibright, I think is about 46% down. But I believe in the project. I believe in its long-term viability. I'm simply just going to hold. I didn't put that much into it that the 50% loss is really hurting me. You know, I've put most of my uh, money into Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, and XRP, uh, and then I've got some other reasonable positions in some other things there as well. But pretty much anything outside of uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP, they're like, well, at least when I bought them, they were one maybe two percent of my total portfolio uh, and currently my altcoins are you know have done pretty well generally but there's again there's there's a number in this dip that have really started to hurt but that's all right uh, all right i'm going to let you go let's see if bitcoin can get over that eleven thousand dollar mark and we're just going to follow this trend i believe every time it sort of dips down it's just going to keep getting bought up I don't know if Grayscale's done yet. I wouldn't be surprised if MicroStrategy is still buying more Bitcoin again for the third time. And I would not be surprised if other institutional buyers are going to get in and do the same. And we are just going to keep seeing this push up, push up, push up, push up. And yeah, again, I don't like to do, you know, price predictions, but it, I think 100,000 is probably a fair number and a very reasonable number for the next peak. I'm not saying it can't go over 100,000 and I'm not saying it couldn't do less than 100,000. It's just my personal opinion that I think a $100,000 Bitcoin uh, is quite doable in the next peak run and I would not be surprised if Plan B uh, and his chart of you know around about 288,000 uh, you know, will play out either. That, that is uh, quite poss possible, particularly with institutions getting in. And then once the retail FOMO starts, yeah, who knows? All right, well, that's it for me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.